Good morning, everybody. Today we will continue with periodic motion. What we have is in this chapter, we will describe the oscillations in terms of amplitude, period, frequency, and angular frequency. We will talk about the periodic motion. In addition to that, we will study the ideal cases and we will learn how to apply the ideas of simple harmonic motion for different physical situations. And then in the next lecture, we will analyze the motions of a pendulum and we will learn what is the damping in oscillations. So some oscillations will die out after a certain time, which is called as damping. And we will also learn the damped oscillations in the next lecture. In addition to that, we will learn how a driving force applied to an oscillator at a particular frequency can cause a very large response or resonance. We will also learn forced oscillations. In order to keep the oscillation constant, you have to apply some certain forces. We will discuss all these things. Actually, it is very simple lecture. We will go step by step and try to stay on the line. OK, you will use your previous information. OK, why we are dealing with periodic motion? Why we are dealing with oscillation? Because many kinds of motion, such as pendulum, musical vibrations, pistons in car engines, also pistons in the industry okay it has many applications and this kind of motion repeat themselves this word is very important look at the piston here what do you see the piston is moving up and it goes back up and down up and down okay this is the moment direction of the piston and here you see a crankshaft which is rotating around certain rotation axis and it is also repeating its motion, OK? So we are talking about repetition of the motions. Both piston and crankshaft repeat their motion, OK? So this is periodic motion, or you can say oscillation. So this kind of motion has many applications in industry, in real life. So very important topic. But the basics of this motion is very simple. You can easily understand. In addition to that, for the forthcoming chapters, for example, when we are dealing with waves, mechanical waves or sound waves, or when we are dealing with alternating electric currents or light, we will use periodic motion information, which we will learn today. So now let me describe what is periodic motion. What is the reason for this type of motion? Here you see a spring, OK? Left part of this spring is attached to this object here, and this part cannot move. And right side of the spring is connected to a glider, OK? And glider can move on this frictionless surface. And at the beginning, this glider is staying in equilibrium position. Spring is relaxed, OK? So let's consider that this is the origin and equilibrium position. And the mass and spring are at rest, OK? So if you pull this glider to the right side by applying some force. Let's consider you apply force to the right side on this glider. Then you stretch the spring, OK? So you remember from your old information, if you stretch the spring, you will store the elastic potential energy in the spring 
and there will be elastic force in the opposite direction to the applied force, then this glider will come back, okay? If you release this glider here at some certain point. So it will go to the equilibrium position if you release the glider, then it will pass through this equilibrium position. It will come back to this position and then this spring will apply another force in the positive x direction, then the glider will move now in positive direction, positive x direction. So if the surface is frictionless and if you don't lose any energy in the system, then this will have a periodic motion. The glider will move between this x positions okay this is the periodic motion or you can say oscillation of the system the system will oscillate between these two points okay it will go back and forth okay so it will repeat this motion so this is periodic motion now let me discuss this situation in detail let's consider the glider here is located at some certain X point, not in the equilibrium position. It is far from the equilibrium position on the right side. Then here we have X is bigger than zero. Okay, we are talking about this X here. So then what about the force Fx applied by the spring? spring will apply this kind of force along the negative x direction fx here okay and due to this force applied by spring on the glider we will have an acceleration okay we have net force and we have acceleration and acceleration is also along the force along the negative x direction so then the stretched spring pulls glider toward equilibrium position. This X is zero is the equilibrium position. And this force applied by the stretch spring on the glider pulls the glider to the equilibrium position. Now let's try to write or draw the free body diagram of this glider. What is the free body diagram of glider? We have mg weight of the glider we have normal force they are in opposite directions so along the y-axis we have zero net force and along the x-axis we have only force applied by the spring on the glider okay what about the friction force this is a frictionless surface for this reason we don't have friction force, okay? A resistance is also ignored in this discussion. So now let me continue. Just consider that due to this force applied by the spring on the glider, this glider came to the equilibrium position, equilibrium condition. This is the equilibrium condition at the origin, okay? So now X is zero. What about the force applied by this spring on the glider? The force applied by the spring on the glider is zero here because the glider is in equilibrium condition, okay? And you also remember that this force, this force applied by the spring is not constant it depends on the x it depends on the position of the glider don't forget this one remember your previous information okay so since spring exerts no force on the glider then the glider has zero acceleration so we don't have any acceleration here since we have zero net force Again, if you draw the free body diagram along the y-axis, we have normal force upward direction. We have mg weight in downward. And then 
in along the x direction x axis we don't have any force so now let's consider that the glider displaced to the left from the equilibrium position this is the equilibrium position where x is zero and now the glider is located on the left side of the equilibrium position this is the x okay so you store elastic potential energy in the spring and spring will apply a force on the glider and the direction of this force is along the positive x okay if the x is negative then the direction of the fx is positive along the positive x direction so then what we have we have positive force along the positive x direction and we have positive ax acceleration so this compressed spring pushes glider toward equilibrium position okay so then what about the free body diagram here for this condition this is the weight of the glider mg downward and we have normal force upward they are equal to each other and net force along the y-axis is zero and we only have fx force applied by the spring along the positive x direction and balls acceleration and force are in the same direction if the x is negative so look at the first condition if the x is positive then balls fx and ax are negative okay so due to this force applied by the spring we will have a periodic motion okay then here i will try to explain some important terms in periodic motion so be careful here very easy to understand just stay on the line so here we have the first term amplitude amplitude in turkish yandik okay here we show it with capital a symbol which is the maximum magnitude of displacement from equilibrium so just consider that on the right side here we have glider it is staying in the equilibrium position okay where x is zero then i have compressed this glider in this negative direction okay so this is the x so amplitude defines this maximum magnitude of displacement from equilibrium you can also consider that just you stretch the spring you change the position of the glider for example to the positive side of the equilibrium then here you have x okay then this is the new position of the glider on the right side in the positive side okay so the maximum x gives us the amplitude okay the maximum magnitude of displacement from the equilibrium in the maximum displacement x is equal to the amplitude okay amplitude is this one it is related to the displacement and what about the period period shown with the capital t it is the time for one cycle what i mean with the one cycle again let me explain on this graph just consider that this is the maximum compressible position for the glider where we have x is equal to minus a let's say and here we have maximum stretchable position for the x here x is positive a okay and let's consider that this glider is moving between this two x positions 
okay? So it has periodic motion between these two positions of X. The period here on the left side defines the time for one cycle. What I mean with the one cycle, just consider that, first of all, you have compressed the spring here at this position, okay? Let's consider this is the starting point, and then you release the glider, then glider will move in positive x direction, so it will reach to the maximum x displacement here, positive side, in the positive side, then it will go back to the initial condition. So this is the one cycle, okay? It started from this position, and then it comes back to the start position. So this is one cycle, and this is called as period. How long does it take to reach to the starting point? You can consider like this. And what about the frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles per unit time. So sometimes this periodic motion repeats itself very fast in very short time, okay? I'm talking about less than one second in microsecond, in nanosecond, in femtosecond, okay? So this system, this periodic motion repeats itself. So it is moving very fast between these two X positions, okay? So then let's say within one second we have 10 cycles or within one second we have 100 cycles. So the number of cycles per unit time gives us the frequency of the motion. And SI unit of frequency is given with hertz. One hertz is given with this symbol and it is equal to one cycle per second and it is usually shown with this one. One cycle per second, okay? And we have also another term, the angular frequency, which is shown with the omega, is given with two pi times the frequency. Here we have omega. Omega is given with two pi f. F is frequency, and you know of two pi. We have learned in circular motion. I will go into detail related to this angular frequency, but just keep in your mind that we have relation between angular frequency and frequency of the periodic motion and they are completely different things, okay? Be careful when you are dealing with periodic motion in the problems. If angular frequency is given, then don't confuse with the normal frequency, okay? They have this type of relation. Here, I would like to give you information about angular frequency. Angular frequency omega is a useful quantity it represents the rate of change of an angular quantity, not necessarily related to a rotational motion that is always measured in radians, okay? So the unit of angular frequency is given with radian per second, okay? This is the unit of the angular frequency. And remember that the unit of the frequency is given as cycle per second. And if you put here cycle per second, if you put here radian per second for the omega, then for the two pi, you can get this one radian per cycle for the two pi, okay? So I will also discuss the omega in my forthcoming transparencies. Here I will not go into detail. So here we have defined four terms, amplitude, period, frequency, and angular frequency. Now let me give you information about the relation between period and frequency. 
So frequency is given with the reciprocal of period or period is given with the reciprocal of the frequency. So they have this relation. Frequency can be written with one over period. Period can be written with one over frequency. Period is the time and frequency is the cycle per unit time. You can consider like this. And what about the angular frequency and period? In the previous transparency, we have given that the angular frequency is given with 4 pi f. And here we have frequency. Instead of frequency, you can use this expression 1 over t. So then you can write the angular frequency in terms of period t. Now, let me give you one bio application, wing frequencies of the birds. The rabi trotted hummingbird, hummingbird is sinecusho, normally flaps its wings at about 50 hertz. What is the meaning of 50 hertz? Look at the definition of the hertz. Hertz is one cycle per second. Okay, this is the frequency. So here we have 50 hertz. 50 hertz means 50 cycle per second. Okay, this bird can flap this wings 50 times per second, 50 cycle per second. It is huge, but if you compare it with the insects, it is much smaller. Just have a look on insects. Insects can flap their wings at even faster rates from 330 hertz, 330 cycle per second for a housefly, carasinic, and 600 hertz for a mosquito to an amazing 1040 hertz for the tiny biting witch. This is another type of fly and it has this frequency and mosquito severusinic it has this frequency 600 cycle per second it is huge frequency let me continue with the example 14.1 from the book what we have here this is an ultrasonic transducer used for medical diagnosis it oscillates at 6.7 million cycle per second or 6.7 megahertz or 6.7 times 10 to 6 hertz. How long does each oscillation take? And what is the angular frequency? So frequency is given in the question. It is given with 6.7 megahertz. And period is S and also angular frequency is asked within the question. So period is given with 1 over f. Just put the frequency here. It's hertz. So remember the hertz. Hertz is this one, one cycle per second. So you can take it here as second. Then here we have microsecond. This is the period. Period is the time. Then we have unit for the time, microsecond, OK? And what about the angular frequency? Angular frequency is given with this expression. Just put here 2 pi radian per cycle and just put here the frequency cycle per second. This cycle will cancel this cycle and then we will have radian per second for the angular frequency. So what do you see here? Very rapid vibration with large f and omega angular frequency and small period. So each cycle, each cycle is completed within 0.15 microsecond. And within one second, we have 6.7 million cycle. So it is very rapid vibration in ultrasonic transducers. They are used in hospitals, maybe 
maybe you already know, maybe you have seen in the hospital, they are used for the medical diagnosis. Do you have any question here? Okay, now let me continue with the simple harmonic motion. Generally, when the students see this name or hear this motion, simple harmonic motion, they think that this is a very complicated phenomenon. No, it is not true. It is just a perfect ideal periodic motion. Okay, we will talk about the periodic motion. Simple harmonic motion is simplest kind of oscillation, simplest kind of the periodic motion, okay, which occurs when the restoring force Fx is directly proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium. So what I mean, here we have glider again, it is stretched to the x position. Here we have x is equal to zero. This is the equilibrium condition. And here we have x is equal to x. The spring is stretched a little bit. And then we have a restoring force. This one, fx, applied by the spring on the glider. So what about the fx? fx is given with this expression, minus k times x. x is the position. And this is the force applied by the spring. This is also called as restoring force, okay? We have discussed this one in the previous lectures. So what do you see here? Here we have K, force constant. Here we have K, force constant, okay? So this constant is constant for certain material. We have discussed this one. We have also given some tables, okay? So if you increase the X, then the spring will apply bigger force on the glider. If you decrease the X, then the spring will apply the smaller force on the glider. If the X is equal to zero, then Fx will also be equal to zero in the equilibrium condition, okay? So what we say here that if this restoring force, this Fx, is directly proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium, then we have simple harmonic motion, okay? This happens if the spring in the figure here, if the spring here is an ideal one that obeys Hooke's law. Okay, we have discussed in chapter six. So then we can write this expression. This Fx is the force applied by the spring on the glider or called as restoring force exerted by an ideal spring. And this is the force constant of the spring. And this is the displacement X on the right side. Then this restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement. So then we have simple harmonic motion. But here, again, I would like to remind you that we have considered that there is no friction on the surface between the glider and this air track, okay? We considered that this is frictionless surface and we have also ignored the air resistance. So mechanical energy is conserved here, okay? We are talking about the ideal case. So then this, this motion will be kept, okay, in certain amplitude and it is called a simple harmonic motion. So what about the relation between the restoring force and displacement, here we have Fx in this axis, restoring force Fx, and here we have displacement x on the right side. This axis is the displacement, and this axis is the restoring force, and we have this type of relation. 
if x is positive restoring force the force applied by the spring is along the negative x direction then it has this type of relation what do you see here the force is directly proportional to the x i increase the x then force increases i increase the displacement then the restoring force increases in negative direction i'm talking about the increase in magnitude of restoring force and if i increase the displacement then i will increase the force okay so the force restoring force applied by the spring on the glider is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium if we have an ideal spring okay if you compress the spring if the x displacement is negative then we have force positive what is the meaning of that the spring pushes the glider to the equilibrium condition it applies a force along the positive x direction so we have this displacement then we have this force this displacement and this force okay so you increase the displacement then the force is increased so then the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium then for this condition we have a motion the glider is moving back and forth between positive x negative x positive amplitude negative amplitude then this motion is called as simple harmonic motion so you see the definition of simple harmonic motion is very simple okay so nothing new here for you then let me define the acceleration in simple harmonic motion so what we have discussed here we have a net force in simple harmonic motion okay so if you have net force along the x-axis then we should have an acceleration right so what about this acceleration i will discuss this one so if you take the time derivative of x displacement you can calculate the velocity if you take the second time derivative of the x then you can calculate acceleration okay and it is given with fx over m so net force is given with fx which is given with m times ax and ax is given with this expression okay then you can write this expression but what is fx fx here is equal to minus k times x right then if you take acceleration from this expression then you can write the acceleration in this form minus k over m times x force constant of restoring force this k x is displacement m is mass of the object mass of the glider in this discussion okay then this is the relation between acceleration and displacement in simple harmonic motion what do you see here if the x is displacement is positive then acceleration is in negative direction because here in front of the x here we have negative sign and if x is negative then here we have a positive ax okay so these are the conditions and relations between the displacement and acceleration i have already discussed this one i have shown you here so look at this one so here the x is negative the spring is compressed and the, this is the direction of the force applied by the spring it is along the positive x then we have positive acceleration along the positive x direction or here if the x displacement is positive 
then the restoring force applied by the spring is in the negative direction, then acceleration is in negative direction. So this equation, which we have calculated here, will give us the same result, okay? This is mathematical representation of this physical result. Any question here related to the acceleration of the simple harmonic motion? So here I would like to give you very important information related to the equation for simple harmonic motion. Look at the acceleration. Is this acceleration constant or non-constant? In simple harmonic motion, here we have non-constant acceleration because acceleration changes as a function of x. When the x is zero, force is zero, acceleration is zero, okay? If you have bigger x, then you have bigger acceleration in opposite direction. If you have smaller x, smaller displacement, then we have smaller acceleration, but in the opposite direction compared to the displacement. So then this acceleration is not constant. It changes as a function of the displacement. Then you cannot apply constant acceleration equations, which we have learned in chapter two, okay? You cannot apply these equations, these equations which we have discussed in chapter two, because here we have non-constant acceleration. Don't forget this one. Here, I also would like to give you another definition for the harmonic oscillator, if a body undergoes simple harmonic motion, it is called a harmonic oscillator, okay? So it oscillates. What is the meaning of oscillation? It repeats its motion with some certain amplitude and period and frequency, okay? So if a body has a simple harmonic motion, then it is called as a harmonic oscillator. What else? So we will use this simple harmonic motion as an approximate model for many different periodic motions. For example, the electric current in an alternating current circuit. For example, at home, we use AC current, right? We have 220 AC volt in the cables, which electricity comes from the power plant station to the house, okay? We, we use AC current, so it changes by time. It is fluctuating. In physics too, you will learn that. And this information, which you have learned related to the simple harmonic motion, will be useful for you. In addition to that, for very important scientific applications, for example, the oscillations of atoms in molecules or in solids, this simple harmonic motion is also used. So simple harmonic motion is an ideal case for the periodic motion, okay? Do you have any question here? Then, let me discuss the difference between the ideal case and real case, what happens in real applications. So in ideal case, this restoring force applied by the spring is directly proportional to the displacement X, okay? Then we have this type of curve this type of relation between force and displacement. I have already shown you. So you have displacement in positive X, and then you have force in negative direction. If you increase the displacement, then the magnitude of the force, restoring force will be increased, okay? This is in ideal case. If you have displacement in negative direction, then we have positive force. 
positive restoring force and the magnitude of the restoring force increases with displacement, okay? This blue curve here, this dashed line is the ideal case which represents this equation. But in real cases, the restoring force deviates from Hooke's law, okay? What do you see here? It is shown with the red color here, this one. What do you see here that in real cases, the restoring force deviates from Hooke's law, deviates from the ideal case, okay? It can be happen due to the spring properties, okay? It can be happen due to the friction force, okay? It can be happen due to the air resistance, okay? But in real cases, the situation is a bit different. Any question here? Then let me continue with the relation between uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Be careful, it is very easy to understand. If you understand this picture, then it is very easy for you. So look at this setup here. We have a ball, okay? This is the ball. And just consider that this ball is rotating along this circular path, okay? This is reference circle. And just consider that this ball here is rotating around this circle, okay? Then here on the left side, you have light sources or single light source, okay? Then you send light from this side, from left side to the right side. And here we have a screen, okay? Let's say this is screen. And what do you see here? If you send light, you will have shadow of the ball here on the screen, right? And if this ball is rotating in this circular path, then the position of this ball will change by time on the screen, okay? So if the ball is here, then you will see shadow of the ball here due to this light source on the left side. Okay, now let's discuss this example here in this picture. Here, this is the side weave of this experimental setup, and here, this is the top weave of this experimental setup. Here, we have ball. The name of ball is Q. This is the Q ball, and it is rotating on turntable. Okay, it has a circular pass with some certain angular speed. It is rotating on this turntable, okay? This is the distance to the rotation axis of the ball. And here we have a light source. Then you send light. So if you send light, you will see the shadow of the ball here. Just consider that ball continues its motion in this direction then it reaches to this point. Then now shadow of the ball comes to this point. And just consider that ball continues here. It's counterclockwise motion. Then just consider that the ball is here. Then the shadow on the screen is located here. Then the ball goes to its circular motion and it reaches here again, let's say, then the shadow again here about the origin, and it continues to its circular motion, then now the ball is located here on the right side, then its shadow is located here, okay? So this cue ball 
has uniform circular motion on a rotating turntable. It is rotating with some certain angular frequency. OK, then you are checking the shadow of this ball. What do you see here on the screen? Look at the screen. On the screen, let's consider this is the initial position of the ball and it goes to the equilibrium. It passes through the equilibrium and it reaches to the maximum amplitude in negative direction. Then from this point, then it goes back. It comes to the equilibrium and it goes to the maximum positive amplitude and it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What do you see here? This is more or less the motion of the spring a glider. OK, just consider here a glider attached to a spring and this is the origin. This is the maximum amplitude, maximum stretched condition. This is the maximum compressed condition. OK, this is motion of the glider with the spring. OK, this is periodic motion or simple harmonic motion. So then we have relation between uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. OK. So. Now let me continue if everything is clear here. Please let me know if something is missing here. The mechanism is very simple. If you understand this figure, then you can easily understand the force coming equations. So remember the circular motion. We have tangential velocity in circular motion, OK? And this tangential velocity is given with R times omega. What was R? R is the radius. And here R is A, OK? A, maximum displacement from the equilibrium, OK? Then you can write velocity of the ball with this expression speed of the ball linear speed of the ball is given with the amplitude times angular speed or radius times angular speed okay just keep this information in your mind because here we have uniform circular motion in addition to that this ball has certain acceleration this is given with a radial okay it is given with d square over r okay and what else here again instead of a radial i can write this expression d square over a because radius is given with a or instead of v square i can write this expression just take the square of this one r square omega square over a so what is r r is a here then i can write it with this one a square then a radial can be written with a times omega square OK, so you know all this information from the rotational motion. I will not go into detail. So now let me come back to this. Transparency. So. Here. We have a cue ball and this cue ball is moving. Around this circular pass. It has uniform circular motion with some certain radius with some certain radial acceleration. OK, here we have the 
diagram of this motion. Here we have a definition related to this circular motion. The circle in which the ball moves so that its projection matches the motion of the oscillating body is called reference circle. What I mean here, here we have a circular pass and the ball has circular motion around this circle. And here we have a periodic motion, okay? So if this circular motion can be expressed with this periodic motion, then this circle is called as reference circle, okay? This circle in which the ball moves so that its projection matches the motion of the oscillating body is called the reference circle. And this cue ball is moving around this reference circle. So now what about the speed of this cue ball and what about the acceleration of this cue ball? So we know that as point Q moves around the reference circle with constant angular speed, we are talking about omega, vector O Q here, this one, this vector, O Q vector, rotates with the same angular speed. So this Q vector is rotating around this circle. And such a rotating vector is called as phasor. We have learned this one in the previous chapters. And this phasor information will also be useful in the physics too. Okay, so this is the phasor. And now let's define the terms here. This is the radius of the circle or maximum amplitude of the periodic motion, simple harmonic motion, okay? This is the theta, the angle between this vector or Q vector and the X axis. And here we have P point, projection of this Q during this circular motion, okay? And here we have X. What is X? Displacement. Displacement in periodic motion. So X is zero when the system is in equilibrium and it is moving along the positive X direction. It reaches to its maximum amplitude and it goes back and it comes to the maximum amplitude in negative direction. Okay, so this is the X displacement. It can be positive or negative in periodic motion. Here along this X axis, I am showing the periodic motion of this cue ball, okay? So since this cue ball is moving in this circular path, this uniform circular motion, then I can express this motion in terms of periodic motion, simple harmonic motion, okay? Then I am writing this X. X is given with A times cosine theta. What is A? A is the amplitude or radius of the circle. Here we have theta and X is given with A times cosine theta. Is it clear? Any question here? Then let me continue. Ball moves in uniform circular motion around this circle and shadow of the ball moves back and forth on X axis in simple harmonic motion. Okay, here. So now let me continue. So we have x which is given with a times cosine theta. So what about the velocity? What about the acceleration? Okay, 
This is the cue ball. It has uniform circular motion. And this is the tangential velocity of the cue ball, okay, which is given with VQ. And this tangential velocity has this component along the X axis and this component along the Y axis, okay? So then when the Q is at Q ball is at this position, its projection P will have this velocity, which is equal to the X component of VQ, okay? The X is equal to the X component of the VQ. So what is the X component of the VQ? Here we have theta. If you apply the geometry, then you can calculate the X is equal to minus VQ times sinus theta. Why minus? Because the direction of the velocity is in negative direction in this case. Okay, this is the velocity. Do you have any question? Velocity of the projection of the cue ball along the x-axis. So, since the point Q is in uniform circular motion, it has uniform circular motion, the acceleration vector is given with this one. Okay, this is a radial or a Q, okay? And what about this A radial? I have already calculated this one. How to calculate this one? Let me show you again. What was the A radial? We remember from the uniform circular motion, it is given with V square over R, and R here is given with amplitude, V square over A. And what is V? V tangential velocity, VQ, VQ tangential velocity is given with R times omega in uniform circular motion, right? And I can also write it like this, A times omega amplitude, R is equal to amplitude. And just to put this VQ here instead of V, then, you can calculate a radial or a q radial acceleration of the q ball which is equal to omega square a okay this one here so now we have x position of the projection of the q ball we are dealing with the projection of the q ball on the x axis so we have displacement of the P point of the cue ball. We have velocity of the P point of the cue ball. We have acceleration of the P point projection of the cue ball. Okay, so we have calculated the X, VX and AX along the X axis. So then we have found a relation between uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Do we have any question up to this point related to the definition of X, VX and AX? Any question? Here I have forgotten something. Let me also discuss this one. We have calculated radial acceleration of the cue ball, which has uniform circular motion. But what about the X component of this acceleration? X component of this acceleration is given with minus AQ, which we have calculated here, times cosine theta. This minus sign is showing the direction of the acceleration. When let's consider Q ball is here, then the projection will be here projection will be here, then in this condition, we will have this Vx and we will have this Ax along the positive x direction. So if you understand the physics, others are mathematics.
Then let me continue. We have calculated a Q with this one, omega squared times A. A is the amplitude or radius of the circle, okay? Then AX, X component of this acceleration is given with minus AQ times cosine theta, okay? So what is AQ? Acceleration, radial acceleration of the Q ball. Just take this one, put it there. We have calculated AQ. Then here we have omega squared times A. This is the radial acceleration of the Q ball. Then here I have A times cosine X. A times cosine X. What is this? A times cosine X. This is the X, okay? This is the X displacement. So instead of A times cosine X, you can write X, then X component of the acceleration is given with minus omega squared times X. Remember that in the previous transparencies, we have calculated this AX in this form. We have minus K over M times X. So here we have AX. Here we have AX, so by using these two expressions, you can get relation between omega square and K, between omega square and M, or you can get this expression. Omega angular frequency is given with square root of K over M. This is the force constant. This is the mass of the object. Do you have any question here? Okay. Now, let's discuss the characteristics of simple harmonic motion. Actually, I will summarize what I have found. Here, we have found this relation by using these two equations for the accelerations. Then, we have angular frequency for simple harmonic motion, which is given with square root of K over M. This is the mass of the object. This is force constant of restoring force, okay? And frequency for the simple harmonic motion is given with this expression. Omega is given with two pi F. If you take frequency, it will be given like this, omega over two pi. So instead of omega, just use this one. Then you can write the frequency in this form, one over two pi square root of K over M. And since the period is given with 1 over F, just put here F, then you can calculate the period in this form. So what do you see here? This angular frequency is independent from the amplitude. We don't have any amplitude in the equation of angular frequency. Look at the frequency. Within the frequency, we don't have amplitude. It is independent from the amplitude. Look at the period. It is also independent from the amplitude, okay? Amplitude is not included within these equations. So, what about the real applications? Here we have times with different sizes, with different masses. This is a time with the biggest mass and biggest size, okay? Then it has low frequency. Frequency is 128 hertz. And here we have the smallest time of the signs, okay? It has the smallest mass and smallest size. So due to its small mass, it has high frequency. So look at the equation of the frequency force constant of restoring force. If these times are made from the same material, they will have same K and only M affects the frequency. So here we have small M, then you have high frequency. Here we have bigger M, then since M is bigger, then the frequency is lower, okay, low frequency. Let me finish this part with this transparency and then I will continue with the characteristics of simple harmonic motion 
after the break. So this is the example 14.2 from the book, angular frequency, frequency and period in simple harmonic motion, period is time. So a spring is mounted horizontally. This is the spring here in figure A. With its left end fixed, a spring balance attached to the free end and pulled toward the right indicates that the stretching force is proportional to the displacement and a force of 6 Newton causes a displacement of 0.03 meter. So this is the equilibrium condition for the spring where x is equal to zero. This is the stretched condition and this is the spring balance. Spring balance in Turkish yaylı kantar, okay? So you apply force, 6 Newton to the right side and it causes a displacement of 0.03 meter. We replace the spring balance with a 0.5 kilogram glider, pull it 0.02 meter to the right along a frictionless air track and release it from rest. So you remove the spring balance from the system and instead of this spring balance, you use a glider Okay, then you stretch this spring to this condition and you release the system from this condition. So since it is stretched, the restoring force applied by the spring will try to move the system to the equilibrium condition. Okay, so then F spring will be in this direction. So what is the question? Find the force constant K of the spring. K is asked. Find the angular frequency omega, frequency F, and period of the resulting oscillation. So when you release this glider from the rest, it will move back and forth, back and forth, okay? So it will have this type of motion. So then, this motion will have angular frequency, will have frequency, will have period, okay? So these are asked within the question. So what about the force constant K? We know that Fx is given with minus Kx. So if you take K from this expression, you can write like this. What is Fx? The force applied by the spring here we apply a force in positive x direction by hand. The magnitude of force is 6 Newton. And at the same time, spring applies a big force. Okay. It's the same magnitude, but negative sign. Okay. So then, instead of fx, just use this minus. 6 Newton and instead of X just use this 0.03 meter which is given here in the question and then you can calculate force constant of this spring 200 kilogram per square second and in the question in the second part of the question when you put a glider here with mass of 0.5 kilogram so what about the omega? What about the frequency? What about the period of the oscillation? You know of the K force constant. You know of the mass of the glider. Then omega can be found in 20 radian per second. In case of frequency, you have calculated omega. You know of the 2 pi. It is given with radian per cycle. Then the result is 3.2 cycle per second or 3.2 hertz and period is the reciprocal of the frequency. Just put the frequency here, then you can find the period 0.31 seconds. Do you have any question here? Okay, in the previous part of my lecture, we have discussed the displacement as a function of time for simple harmonic motion and we got this expression 
x displacement is given with a times cosine theta. This is the a radius of the circular motion or the maximum amplitude in the simple harmonic motion. This is the theta and this is the displacement and x displacement is given with this expression. We have also calculated Vx. We have also calculated Ax for simple harmonic motion of this cue ball, okay? Now, let's try to write this theta here in cosine theta. Here we have a theta and just try to write this theta in terms of omega and time. So here we have theta, which is given with omega times t plus phi. So how can I write this equation? Remember the displacement is given with velocity times time, right? And you can consider that this theta is angular displacement, okay? So this one, and this is the angular velocity, this is linear velocity, this is time, this is time, okay? So by using this analogy, you can write this expression. So theta is given with omega times t, and here we have plus phi. So what is the phi? Just consider that this arrow phaser is here and theta is equal to zero, okay? And in the second condition, another system and theta at the beginning is equal to a certain phi angle. Theta is different from zero now for the second phasor vector, okay? So here we have phi angle, okay? If the phi is equal to zero, then theta is given with omega times t, okay? But usually we define theta with this expression, omega times t plus phi. So here we have x displacement for a simple harmonic motion, a cosine theta. Instead of theta, just use this expression. Then finally, you can get displacement in simple harmonic motion. A times cosine, instead of theta, we have omega theta, omega times time plus phi, phase angle, okay? Phase angle means that at the beginning you have some certain angle, okay? The system starts from this condition. Or phi can be zero here and the system can start from the zero, okay? So then this is the displacement. If you take the time derivative of this displacement, you can calculate the velocity. If you take the time derivative of velocity, you can calculate the acceleration, okay? So then I will do that. So before calculating velocity and acceleration, just look at this equation and just try to show this equation on a graph. Here we have time axis, from origin to certain time, and here we have x displacement, okay? Here we have amplitude. This is the maximum amplitude. This is the maximum negative amplitude. This is the origin equilibrium. Just consider this system. The spring attached to a mass, okay? Let's consider this is origin x is equal to zero. Let's consider this is maximum amplitude. Let's consider this is maximum negative amplitude. Okay, so this system is oscillating between these two positions. It has simple harmonic motion. It has periodic motion. Okay, now what about the position displacement as a function of time? So 
if you change the time, the position will change. So here we have position versus time graph. OK, so what do you see here? When the time is zero, when the time is zero, cosine zero is one, right? Just consider that at the beginning, phi angle is zero and time is zero. If the time is zero, if the phi is zero, here we have zero, then cosine zero is one. Then x will be equal to a. OK, so what do you see here? Look at the graph. X is equal to a. OK, then after certain time, time changes, then the position changes. OK, now the system is in equilibrium and system goes to the negative maximum negative amplitude. OK, so just consider that you have started from this position. Mass is here at the beginning. OK, then. Spring force is in negative direction and pulls the system to the equilibrium condition. Now we are in equilibrium after a certain time and after a certain time we reach to the maximum negative amplitude. OK, and it will go back to the equilibrium. It will go back to the maximum positive amplitude. It will go back to the equilibrium. It will go back to the maximum negative amplitude. Equilibrium, maximum amplitude, equilibrium, maximum negative amplitude. OK, so it will go like this. So, so this was the starting point of the mass. OK, then it has back and forth motion, periodic motion, simple harmonic motion. So this was the starting point and one cycle. Is completed within time of period, OK? The period T is the time for one complete cycle of oscillation. So in order to reach to the initial position, now we are in initial position. Here we have one period, OK? And in order to complete a second cycle, then we have another T period. In order to complete another cycle, we have another T period. OK, this is the displacement X as a function of time in simple harmonic motion. OK, we have investigated the position of X displacement as a function of time. We have investigated this one. Now let me continue. So this is the X. X is given with A cosine omega T plus phi. And here we have omega. And in the previous transparencies, we have calculated that this omega is given with square root of K over M. OK. So this is the X. This is the time. OK. So. What happens if I manipulate M? Just consider that. Here we have a mass M. M1, let's say, and here we have a spring with some force constant K. And here we have equilibrium condition X is zero. OK, so then it has certain simple harmonic motion around this equilibrium. Just consider that you are using the same spring. Everything is same, but now you have a bigger M. OK, now we have M2, bigger M, and the amplitude is same. So we have same force constant of K. Everything is same. You only change the mass of the object. 
So if you change the mass of the object, then you can change the angular frequency of the system. If you change the angular frequency, then you will change the X as a function of time. So what do you see here? Mass M increases. If you increase the mass, then angular frequency will decrease. Then you will have different curves. OK, here I have blue curve, this blue one with some certain mass. And if I increase the mass, then I have this purple curve. If I further increase the mass, I have this. Let's say green curve, OK? So X versus time graph changes if I change the mass in this example, OK? Because if I change the mass, then I change the omega angular frequency. And if omega changes, then X changes. X T graph changes, OK? So what about the period? Period is given with this expression, which we have calculated in the previous transparencies, which is given with one over frequency. It is also given with two pi over omega. So omega is given with this expression. Then I can write the period in this form, two pi square root of m over k. So if you increase the mass, then you can increase the period. If you decrease the mass, then you can decrease the period. So look at the graph. You can look at the XT graph. What happens to the XT graph if you increase the mass? So what is period? This is the starting point just for the blue curve and it goes to the initial point, initial X condition. So this is called as period T, OK? So look at the second curve. Period is increased. Look at the third curve. Period is increased. Why? Because we have increased the mass. If you increase the mass of the object in the simple harmonic motion, then you increase the period, OK? So this is the relation between mass and period, mass and displacement. Do we have any question here? OK, here let me discuss the K. Just increase K, force constant is increased. Here again, we have X which is given with a cosine omega t plus phi. This is the xt graph, OK? And we are increasing the k. So look at this angular frequency equation. If you increase the k, force constant, then angular frequency will increase. If you decrease the k, then angular frequency will decrease. Just consider that m is fixed. It is constant during this example. So look at the period. If you increase the force constant, then period will decrease. If you decrease the force constant, then period will increase. So what is the meaning of different force constant? Here we have the same mass m and here we have a spring with some certain force constant K1. And let's consider this is the equilibrium condition. Here we have same mass, mass is constant, and we have different spring with different force constant. Now we have K2, okay? So if you have different force constant, if you have different spring here in this example, then you will have different period of the system, different period of the simple harmonic motion. So here, look at the XT graph. Look at the XT graph. 
if you increase the K, what do you see here? At the beginning, we have blue curve and period is this one. This is the period T. And in case of purple curve, if you increase the K, then period will be decreased. Now we have lower, we have lower period. Okay, this is the initial period and this is the second period. If you further increase the K, then period will be further decreased. Okay, this is the relation between period and force constant of restoring force and the relation between displacement and force constant K. Now, let me discuss the amplitude, effect of amplitude on X and effect of amplitude on period. So, look at the X. Within the X, we have A here and we have omega. Look at the omega. K is constant, M is constant in this example. We only increase the amplitude. So angular frequency is independent from the A. Period is independent from the A. So change in the amplitude cannot affect the angular frequency, cannot affect the period, cannot affect the frequency. But this X, will be affected with the change in the amplitude because here we have amplitude. If you increase the amplitude, you will have increased amplitude. This blue curve is the first case. We have amplitude A. This is the period, okay? And this is the amplitude. If you increase the amplitude, period is same because period is independent from the amplitude but amplitude is increased, we have different XT graph. If you increase amplitude further, then you will have this type of behavior of XT graph, but the period will be same with the previous conditions. You only increase the amplitude. You see here we have A, let's say we have bigger A here, we have bigger A here. Do we have a question here? Now, let me discuss the effect of phase angle phi on the XT graph and also on the period. So, look at the equation of period. Period does not depend on the phi angle. Angular frequency does not depend on the phi angle, but X depends on the phi angle. This is the phase angle I have explained, okay, in the previous transparencies. If the phi angle is zero, then let's consider time is zero, phi is zero, and let's consider time is zero, this will also be zero, then I will have A cosine zero, then it is equal to A, okay? I will have this amplitude, this condition for the displacement. Then I have this blue curve as a function of time. This time, X condition changes. What we mean? Again, let's consider we have a spring and we have mass here and this is the equilibrium condition and this is changing between these two amplitudes this is x is equal to a this is x is equal to minus a and this is x is equal to zero okay we have simple harmonic motion periodic motion within this amplitudes so if the phi angle is zero then we start from this one and the time is zero Okay, then after certain time, again, we are in the same position. This is the period, okay? The time to complete one cycle, okay? So just consider that phi angle is pi over four. So instead of phi here, just put 
5 over 4, then this cosine function will change and then x will change. Then we will have this amplitude at the beginning, okay? And, but of course, what about the maximum amplitude? Maximum amplitude for the first case and second case are equal to each other, but the system starts from this one if we have certain initial phi angle. If the phi angle is pi half, then it starts from this position, okay? Here we have, just look at this condition. X is equal to A cosine omega T plus instead of phi, just use pi half. And when the time is zero, then this is zero. Then I will have A cosine 90 degrees. Then it will have zero. Then the position of the X is zero. It is in equilibrium, okay? Then by time, it will have this type of motion. The X will change. So what do you see here? Amplitude is again same, maximum amplitude. It will oscillate within this range. But in the first case, when the phi is zero, the mass is here. It is initial condition for the mass. When the phi is equal to pi over half, the mass is here starts to oscillate between A and minus A from this position. It will oscillate like this, okay? Or you can start from this position. So phi angle defines the starting position for the simple harmonic motion. And it does not affect the period. Period is same. It does not affect the amplitude. It does not affect the angular frequency. It does not affect the frequency. It only affects the exposition by time. Do you have any question here? Then let me continue with the velocity and acceleration in simple harmonic motion. If you know the displacement, then you can easily calculate the velocity. You can easily calculate the acceleration because velocity is given time derivative of this function. And if you take the time derivative of this function, here we have a, here we have cosine omega t plus phi. So time derivative of cosine function is given with minus sinus function. And here in front of time, here we have omega. So time derivative of omega t will be omega minus omega a sinus omega t plus phi. And this is the velocity in simple harmonic motion. And if you take the time derivative of velocity or second time derivative of the X function, then you can get this expression. The time derivative of sinus function is cosine function. And the time derivative of omega T is omega. Here we have another omega. Then here we have omega square. Okay, this is the acceleration in simple harmonic motion. Look at this expression, acceleration. In acceleration, we have here a cosine omega t plus phi. Look at the x, a cosine omega t plus phi. Then this is the x. Then this acceleration in simple harmonic motion can be written in this form, minus omega square times x displacement. Look at this omega, omega is given with square root of k over m. If you take the square of this one, then you will have here k over m x. Okay, look at this k times x minus k times x. This is fx. Okay, then here we have fx over m or fx is equal to m times ax. Okay, nothing new here. You always come to the same conclusion. Any question here related to the velocity and acceleration in simple harmonic motion? Okay, now let's discuss this velocity and acceleration 
in VT graphs. Okay, what do you see here? This velocity depends on time. This acceleration depends on time. So just plot them on a graph. Here we have displacement and velocity for simple harmonic motion. We have already discussed the displacement. This is displacement as a function of time and displacement is given with this expression. So we have this type of behavior, okay? We have already discussed the X changes between positive A and negative A. This origin is the equilibrium condition. And Vx is given with this expression. We have calculated in the previous transparency. So it is given with sinus function, and here we have negative sign. When the time is zero, we will have zero here, okay? Sinus zero is he zero here. And if you have certain phi angle, then you will have certain velocity. And the maximum value of the velocity is given with this one for the positive side and this one for the negative side. This is the maximum value of the speed, okay? In simple harmonic motion. And what else? Look at the VXT graph. So the graph shifted, okay, by one over four cycle from the XT graph. So we have different graphs. In addition to that, this amplitude of this oscillation also changed, okay? Now, let's have a look displacement and acceleration in simple harmonic motion. Again, here in the top figure, we have XT graph. And here we have acceleration versus time graph. And here we have A cosine minus omega square A cosine omega T plus phi. This is the acceleration in simple harmonic motion. We have extracted this equation in the previous transparencies. And this is the maximum amplitude of this oscillation, this one in positive and negative directions. And then this is the AX acceleration as a function of time. What do you see here? It is also different from the XT graph. It is shifted by 1.4 cycle from the VXT graph, okay? This was the VXT graph. And this AXT graph shifted by one half cycle from the XT graph. And this oscillation has different amplitude compared to the X, okay? So now let's discuss both velocity and acceleration in simple harmonic motion in this example. Here we have a spring, and again here we have a glider, okay? And this is the equilibrium condition, x is equal to zero. This is the maximum amplitude, maximum stretched position. This is the maximum compressed position, positive A, negative A, and equilibrium condition. So let's consider we are starting from the maximum stretch position. This is A and this is equilibrium, and this is the maximum compressed position, negative A, okay? So we are starting from this position. Just consider the system is at rest here, okay? And velocity is zero. What about the acceleration? Acceleration is in negative X direction because this spring will apply a restoring force in this direction. This is the F spring, okay? F spring. So since force is in this direction, then we have acceleration in this direction and velocity here because the system is at rest here. Then after certain time, we have certain velocity and acceleration in the negative x direction, velocity is negative x direction, and here when the system is in equilibrium, the force is zero. 
right? Because force is given with minus kx. When the x is zero, force is zero, okay? System is in equilibrium, okay? So acceleration is also zero, but the system is going along the negative x direction with the maximum velocity along the equilibrium condition. We have maximum velocity. So here, after passing the equilibrium, we have velocity in negative x direction, but since we have compressed the spring here, now the glider here, we have compressed the spring, spring will apply force in positive x direction. Okay, then the acceleration will be along the positive x, and when the glider or box reaches to the maximum amplitude in negative direction, we will have zero velocity, the system is momentarily at rest, and then acceleration is in negative direction, okay, because restoring force is negative direction, so the force applied by the spring pushes the system to the equilibrium condition, then here, again, velocity in positive direction, acceleration is in positive direction. When the system is passing through this equilibrium after a certain time, the acceleration is here in equilibrium is zero, force is zero here when the system is in equilibrium, then we have maximum velocity in positive x direction, and whenever you pass through this equilibrium along the positive x direction, we will have this positive vx, but the acceleration will be negative because restoring force will be in negative direction again, and here when the system glider reaches to the maximum amplitude, again, momentarily, the velocity of the system is zero, okay? Then we have maximum acceleration along the negative x direction. So look at this one here. Here we have acceleration. Here we have acceleration is zero. Here we have acceleration is zero. Here we have acceleration is zero. So acceleration is not constant, okay? Here we have non-constant acceleration. Why? Because this acceleration is given with this relation. Since this Fx restoring force is non-constant, it depends on the x, okay? Then this is also non-constant acceleration. It can be zero, it can be positive, it can be negative, and also its magnitude can be changed by time due to the non-constant restoring force in this example. So this is the velocity and acceleration in simple harmonic motion. Do you have any question here? And let me continue with the amplitude and phase angle. Amplitude is A and phase angle is phi. So how to calculate phase angle and amplitude in simple harmonic motion? In the previous transparencies, we have calculated velocity in simple harmonic motion, okay? So just consider that we have initial velocity when the time is zero. Initial velocity is V0x when the time is zero. And instead of Vx, just put V0x when the time is zero. So now we have this expression. Instead of T, we have just put zero, then this is zero. And instead of Vx, we use V0x. Then the velocity when the time is zero is given minus angular frequency amplitude sinus phi, okay? If you divide this equation with x0, what is the x0? Initial position. So how to find the initial position? x is given with a cosine omega t plus phi. We have done it in the past. 
and if time is zero, then this term will be zero, then x zero, then the time is zero, is given with a cosine phi, right? So you divide this term with x zero, you divide this term with x zero, just put here a cosine phi, when the time is zero, then finally, we have here a, here we have a, you can cancel this one. Here we have sinus phi, here we have cosine phi, it is equal to tangent phi, and here we have minus omega. If you take phi angle here from this expression, then you can calculate the phase angle in simple harmonic motion, which is given with arc tangent minus initial velocity when the time is zero over angular frequency times x zero initial displacement initial position of the system okay and by using the same equations you can also calculate the amplitude in simple harmonic motion i will not go into detail if you wonder you can do it by yourself or you can look at the book so it is given in the book so you can get the amplitude in simple harmonic motion it is given with this expression, square root of x0 square plus v0 square over omega square. This is the amplitude in simple harmonic motion. Now let me continue with this example. Example 14.3 describing simple harmonic motion. In example 14.2, we give the glider and it has an initial displacement x0, okay, 0 0.015 meter, just consider, and the initial velocity v0x 0.4 meters per second. Okay, so this is the equilibrium condition, and it has some initial condition, which is given with 0 0.015 meter, and it has certain V0x. It is in positive direction because given in the question 0 0.4 meter per second. OK, so find the period T amplitude A phase angle phi of the resulting motion. Period amplitude phase angle. OK, then write equations for the displacement x, velocity and acceleration as functions of time. OK, this one. So for the amplitude, you can use this expression. We have already learned, OK, if you know the initial position, if you know the initial velocity, if you know the angular frequency, then you can calculate the amplitude. So in the previous example, in example 14.2, we have calculated angular frequency 20 radian per second. Just use this one here x0 is given in the question, v0x in the given in the question, then I can calculate amplitude 0 0.025 meter. So this is the initial condition and the maximum amplitude is somewhere here. Okay, this is the A, which is equal to 0 0.025 meter. And what about the phase angle? It is given with arc tangent minus v0x over omega x0. Just put all numbers here, then you can calculate minus 53 degrees. This is the phase angle, or you can write it in radian, minus 0.93 radian. So what about the second part of the question? Write the equations for displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So x is given with a cosine omega t plus phi. 
we have calculated phi, okay? Just put it there. We have calculated omega, just put it there. We have calculated A, just put it there. So then X is given with this expression. This is the amplitude, this is the omega, this is the phi, okay? And velocity as a function of time. Look at the formula for the velocity. This is the formula for the velocity, negative omega A sinus omega T plus phi. We have calculated phi. We have calculated omega, we have calculated amplitude. Just put all calculated values, then you can write the velocity as a function of time, x as a function of time. In the same way, you can also calculate acceleration as a function of time. Do you have any question? And let me finish this lecture with the last part, energy in simple harmonic motion. Actually, when we are discussing the glider and sprig system on a frictionless surface, we have discussed the energy, okay? So if the surface is frictionless and if air resistance is ignored and if this spring is an ideal spring, if all conditions are perfect, if we have an ideal system, then total mechanical energy of the system is conserved. So look at the system. Along the y-axis, we have weight, mg. We have normal force, okay? Then net external force along the y-axis is zero. And what about the net force along the x-axis? So there is spring force, okay? But it is not external force. I'm looking this system. We don't have any friction. We don't have a resistance, okay? So the vertical forces does not work because net force along the vertical axis is zero and we assume that the mass of the spring itself is negligible and we consider that this is ideal spring and since the only horizontal force on the body in simple harmonic motion is the conservative force exerted by an ideal spring okay this is given with the fx then mechanical energy is conserved then we have kinetic energy plus potential energy, which is the total mechanical energy of the system. What about the kinetic energy, which is given with one half mvx square? What about the elastic potential energy? This one, one half kx square. And this is constant, right? So here, what do you see? Vx. Here you see x. x is a cosine omega t plus phi we have calculated this is the x and here we have vx you can also write vx in terms of amplitude in terms of omega time and phi we have done it just put all the equations into this total mechanical energy okay then we will get an expression for this total mechanical energy. Before doing that, I would like to discuss the conversion of energy from kinetic to potential in case of this simple harmonic motion. So we have this relation. Total mechanical energy is constant. It is conserved. This is the kinetic energy of the system. This is the elastic potential energy of the system. And if the system is staying at the maximum amplitude, just consider here we have a spring and this is the mass and this is the maximum amplitude and this is the 
equilibrium condition. If the mass is here, velocity is zero, but since x is maximum, this is zero, and instead of x, you can write a, then total mechanical energy can be written in this form. If x is maximum, if amplitude is maximum, in this case, total mechanical energy is only given with the elastic potential energy stored in the spring, okay? And it is constant. So, this value here, one half k a square is the maximum value of the total mechanical energy in simple harmonic motion. Now let me discuss the change in the total mechanical energy as a function of time, as a function of the position, okay? So let's consider that we started from this position. X is equal to a maximum stretch position, and this is the equilibrium condition. X is equal to zero. This is the negative a, okay? So here, momentarily, velocity is zero. Vx is zero, and we have maximum acceleration along the negative x direction. Here, since velocity is zero, kinetic energy in the total mechanical energy is zero, and we have the total mechanical energy is given only with the elastic potential energy. Look at this one. This is the total mechanical energy. Kinetic energy is zero and elastic potential energy is maximum at this condition. And whenever you release this system, the box is moving with this velocity along the negative x direction. We have this acceleration, okay? And the particle is moving in this direction. So it has certain kinetic energy. Now kinetic energy is different from zero and some part of the elastic potential energy is converted to the kinetic energy. Mechanical energy is conserved. It is same as the previous case, but now we have kinetic energy and great elastic potential energy is decreased. And when the system is in equilibrium, when the box is passing through the equilibrium condition, acceleration is zero because here force is zero, okay? Restoring force is zero here. And the object, the box has the maximum velocity because the total mechanical energy is completely converted to the kinetic energy. And the elastic potential energy is zero here. Since the kinetic energy is maximum in this condition, we have maximum velocity. And when you pass this equilibrium condition, the system goes along the negative x direction and the box is located somewhere here. But now, whenever you pass the equilibrium, the direction of the force and direction of the acceleration changes. They are along the positive x because you compress the spring and kinetic energy, some part of kinetic energy is converted to the elastic potential energy but total mechanical energy is conserved, okay? And when you reach to the maximum negative x position, maximum negative amplitude, the system is momentarily at rest, velocity is zero. We have maximum restoring force, we have maximum acceleration, and the direction of the acceleration, direction of the restoring force are along the positive x direction and kinetic energy is zero here because velocity is zero and all the kinetic energy is converted to the elastic potential energy and total mechanical energy is only given with the elastic potential energy and elastic potential energy is conserved. So this is the energy in simple harmonic motion and energy conversion between kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. Do you have any question here? Okay. Let me continue with the energy diagrams for simple harmonic motion. Actually, I have discussed all these things in the previous chapters, so you will easily understand. This is the x position, and you know x 
depends on the amplitude and also omega and time, okay? So this is the maximum amplitude in positive x, positive direction, maximum amplitude in negative direction, and this is the equilibrium condition, and this is the total mechanical energy of the system. Total mechanical energy is constant. This is the energy versus x, okay? When the system is here, the total mechanical energy is only given with the elastic potential energy. When the system is here on the left side, in negative side, total mechanical energy is only given with the elastic potential energy. When the system is in equilibrium here, the energy is only given with the kinetic energy. Elastic potential energy is zero here at this equilibrium condition. And in between, for example, somewhere here, the total mechanical energy is shared by the kinetic energy plus elastic potential energy. And just plot the potential energy, kinetic energy, and total mechanical energy for a body in simple harmonic motion as a function of displacement. Again, this is the displacement maximum amplitude in positive x, maximum amplitude in negative x, and this is the mechanical energy, total mechanical energy, which is constant, where we have zero kinetic energy, here we have zero kinetic energy, and the mechanical energy is only given with the elastic potential energy, and here we have mechanical energy is only given with the kinetic energy, and here we have this green line, we have the behavior of the kinetic energy as a function of the x position. And with the blue one, we have the behavior of elastic potential energy as a function of x. Okay, so at these conditions, here on the left side in negative x direction, and here on the right side in positive x direction, this kinetic energy and potential energy are equal to each other. Do you have any question? Let me discuss the Vx as a function of x, velocity of the glider, for example, here we have Vx. So the x changes as a function of x, as a function of time. So how to calculate the x as a function of position? We can use this expression, okay? So just solve this equation for the velocity, then you can calculate x velocity. x velocity is given plus minus square root of k over m square root of a square minus x square. So just consider this is constant, mass is constant, then amplitude is constant, then as a function of x position, you can calculate the velocity. And the maximum velocity happens when the x is equal to zero in equilibrium condition. If you put zero here, then you will get the maximum velocity in the equilibrium condition, which is given with omega times a. Look at the result. Remember the v omega r from the circular motion. Instead of r, if you use amplitude, we have omega a. Okay, we have also done today. So you have the same result. This is the maximum velocity in simple harmonic motion. And this is the velocity as a function of x displacement. Example 14.4, velocity, acceleration, and energy in simple harmonic motion. Find the maximum minimum velocities attained by the oscillating glider of example 14.2. Find the maximum and minimum accelerations. Find the velocity and acceleration when the glider is halfway from its initial position to the equilibrium position. Find the total energy, potential energy, and kinetic energy. So velocity is given with this expression. We have given this one here. Maximum velocity is given with this expression. If you know the force constant, if you know the mass, if you know the amplitude, 
then you can calculate maximum velocity, okay? And you can also calculate the maximum acceleration. Remember the formula for the acceleration, we have done it, okay? So if you know the K, if you know the mass, if you know the X, then you can calculate the acceleration as a function of X and the maximum acceleration happens when the X is equal to A, then if you put it there, then you can calculate. And what about the VX at some certain condition? By applying this equation, you can find this one. And finally, you can write the total mechanical energy and you can write the elastic potential energy, kinetic energy by using these equations. If you know the K, if you know the amplitude, then you can calculate in Joule. You can, if you know the Kx, you can calculate elastic potential energy in Joule. If you know the mass, if you know the Vx for some certain x position, then you can calculate the kinetic energy in Joule. Let me finish with this last example and last transparency example 14.5 energy and momentum in simple harmonic motion here we have a block with the mass of capital m okay attached to a horizontal spring with force constant k it has force constant k is moving in simple harmonic motion with amplitude a1 okay it is moving between positive A1 and negative A1 with simple harmonic motion as the block passes through its equilibrium position. So this is the equilibrium position when the X is equal to zero. A lump of putty of mass M is dropped from a small height and sticks to it. Find the Neve amplitude and period of the motion. So Neve amplitude and period of the motion is S. We can say this one. And in part B, repeat part A if the putty is dropped onto the block when it is at one end of its pass. So just consider that the mass box is staying here at the beginning and then you drop this lump of party of mass with m okay at this condition when the x is equal to a1 in this one in a this party is dropped when the system is in equilibrium and in this condition when the system in a the party is dropped when the mass box is passing from the equilibrium but here in the second condition in part B, the party is dropped when the system is at this condition, okay? So then you will repeat the same solution, same equations in case of B. So now what about the question? Neve amplitude and Neve period of the system. So velocity is given with this one. This is the maximum velocity, okay? And here we have the energy. Energy of the system when it is passing through the equilibrium. In the equilibrium condition, energy is given with one half m v1 square, okay? In equilibrium, total mechanical energy is only given with the kinetic energy because elastic potential energy is zero in equilibrium condition. Okay, and V1 is given with this expression. So then we have this V1 and during the collision, the X component of momentum of the block party system is conserved. Momentum is conserved, okay? So just consider this is frictionless surface. A resistance is ignored, okay? And the net force acting on the system is zero, then the momentum is conserved, okay? Remember the conservation of momentum. And before the collusion, the X component of the momentum is M times V1. M is this one, V1 is this one. So we have calculated V1. 
and then this is the initial momentum of the system along the x-axis. And what about the momentum of the party? During the collusion, this party has no x momentum, okay, because it is moving along the y-axis. So then what about the after the collusion? After the collusion, the momentum of the system is given with mass of the block plus mass of the party and the velocity of the system. Since they stick to each other, then I can write it like this from the conservation of momentum. Initial momentum of the box along the X axis, initial momentum of the party and final momentum of the system. Then here we have this expression. Here we have V2, final velocity, which is given in terms of V1, okay? And what about the kinetic energy after the collusion? So just after the collusion, the total mechanical energy is still purely kinetic, okay? I'm talking about this time, this condition. So this party collides with this mass, M, and then they stick each other. So before the collusion, after the collusion, they have same kinetic energy momentarily, okay? Then the final mechanical energy after the collusion is given with the kinetic energy of the system. So this is the total mass of the system. This is the final velocity of the system after the collusion. I am just dealing with the collusion happens in the equilibrium condition, okay, in a very short time. Then here we have V2. Instead of V2, you can write this expression, just put it there, okay? And what we have here, we have one half m square over m plus m v1 square. So if you take one m from this one, and if you take one half, if you take v1 square, then you can write this equation in this form. And what is this one? This is E1, okay, because we have calculated V1 here, E1 here. So E1 is here. This is the E1. And then what about E2? The maximum value of E2 is given with this expression, one half K A2 square, okay? So this is the maximum value of the energy total mechanical energy of the system and it is equal to the e2 here when the system is in equilibrium then you can get this expression this is the final amplitude of the system a2 this is the initial amplitude of the system okay then i have expression for the final amplitude of the system. Actually, it is asked within the question, what is the final amplitude and what is the period of the motion? Period does not depend on the amplitude. Just remember, period is given with this expression, 2 pi m over k. Okay, we have done it. And after the collusion, we have another m, which is given with capital M plus small m, this is the mass of the capital one is the mass of the box. Small one is the mass of the party. Then we have the final period of the system. So with this one, I have finished this lecture. And next lecture, we will continue with the applications of simple harmonic motion. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.